Now I don't learn my lesson easy, seeing as how my last video that featured custom knives was avoided like a band-aid floating in a pool, or in the parlance of the channel, a beer video. I figured I'd release something a little bit bigger into the metaphorical pool and do another video about a custom knife. Now other than house payment switchblades, one of my favorite knife genres is the big dumb chopper one. For years I had my eye on a big one from Wallace Edge Tools, and two Novembers ago Mr. Wallace said he had an XXL Spear II available if I wanted it, because it seemed to fit my, uh, my whole deal. The only weird thing about it is that it had a lefty sheath made for it. Now personally, I'm not a freak of nature, but I figured I could get used to a cross draw or maybe even the left hand occasionally, or as uh, knife guys call it, the stranger pull. So I said, here's my 500 bucks, man. Now Mike Wallace, in addition to making his own knives, has designed knives for cold steel for years. Two examples being the Colossus, which I love like one of my children. Okay, you know what, that sounds weird. I love like my father, and the Bush Ranger seen here. But before we go any further, let's examine the dimensions and experiment with the format here. I mean, I'm using my left hand now sometimes, so we're gonna try something new. I know two of the biggest complaints of the channel is that I've been, you know, making videos at all, or that I should make more of them. So I'm trying to save a little bit of time here, and plus we're gonna see how many blood vessels pop without the blue lines. So here we have the Wallace Edge Tool Spear 2 XXL from uh, Wallace Edge Tools, a small one bro company like uh, Sharp by Design from my last video that specializes in fixed blades. Mostly Mike makes weak and puny 3 to 8 inch blades, but then sometimes reasonable sized 10 inch blades like this one. Now for an easy frame of reference to compare it to knives you may already know, the XXL Spear 2 size is comparable to the Essi Hunglas. Although I feel like I should just call it Junglas at this point. Looking at the blade a bit closer, it's made from a huge chunk of razor sharpened Z-Wear steel, which is very similar to 3V, popular in, you know, expensive fixed blades nowadays. And it was responsible for the huge gash on my finger. Okay, the knife didn't almost cut off my finger. I almost cut off my finger. I was shooting this in a hurry and, uh, uh right before church. And, uh, well, my mind was elsewhere thinking about... Jesus. And bam, you know what? Never should have had my hand there. Well, I sort of hesitate to show this. I don't really see any OSHA posters up, so, you know, whose fault is it really? I know the brimmed hats have been waiting for this moment for years, and the safety glasses guy for sure is like, as he cracks his fingers, finally this careless, stupid son of a bitch. Ah, that, there's children watching. I'm, I mean, he kind of deserved it. It's like he didn't read a single one of my comments about safety over the years. You know, his keyboard's in for it. Of course I wouldn't be a good shithead YouTuber if I didn't document it for the clicks. Graphic design is kind of my passion, and I don't want to spoil anything, but wait until you see this video I shot in January. Okay, you know what? It wasn't actually an accident, everyone. The finger meat test shown here is evidence that I don't think I've owned a chopper quite this sharp, and that I'm real cautious with hand placement. No stitches. I had people just out of frame watching and made sure I did it correctly. But if you want to, just go ahead and get it out. Now's your chance. Now, like I said in the Sharp Eye Design video you didn't watch, first and foremost in buying custom knives is you really have to love the design. Now, I'm a simple knife pro, and I respond well to the clean look of Mike's fixed blades and paired perfectly with sculpted and sometimes real fancy G10. Which brings me to the handle. The generous and gentle G10 fits my hand perfectly. Everything has been sculpted, chamfered, and rounded without any jimping or unnecessary gimmicks. It allows your index finger to be tightly gripped on the handle here, or up front for the detail, smashing and chopping. The choil is about as comfortable as is the handle, also chamfered and rounded when you choke up on it. The scales are olive drab, G10, OD. It almost feels like micarta. It is even textured to kind of look like it. G10 can kind of get boring nowadays, but Mike's knives are evidence that he can transform the material by layering and texturing and turn my frown upside down. It's dressed up with some bead blasted brass tubes and the medallion logo, well Mike's medallion logo. Now earlier I said this knife is similar in size to the Hunglas. Also it's the BK9 size, uh, the Cold Steel Wild West Bowie size, which you know, you've seen on the channel. But this knife has a significantly thicker blade stock, so it's also noticeably heavier than those. Now while over the years I've railed on about weight, and carried on about how pocket knives don't really need to weigh over four ounces. Let's pretend for a second 
I've never said those things, and I'm not a huge hypocrite for loving this north of a pound and a half beast here. In fact, I love the weight. For a second, I assume the reason is the knife has put some sort of hex on me, but more likely it's due to a parasite I contracted in my 20s from drinking warm PBR out of nearly empty cans. Were they my cans? Was this even the street I walked home on last night? And the fun part of that is finding the ashtray. Although, one interesting thing, the tang here is tapered. It thins out near the butt. If You see that here when I hold it sideways. So it could be heavier. Walking around with this on your hip, you feel like a real cowboy. Even if you drive a crossover, can't handle your liquor like a man anymore, or, you know, even grow a full beard. The sheath is made from an overbuilt thick leather. I prefer droppers, belt butts, or danglers. The sheath has some snaps so you can remove it without taking off your belt. Or, if you're like me, at the end of the day the knife comes off when the pants come off. The leather is thick, like bridal leather thick and hand sewn. Mike doesn't make these sheaths. This one's made by Jose's Leather, who is on Instagram. And I have linked below if you'd like a custom one made or, you know, here's his feed. If you want to take a look at it, he can make a sheath for any of your knives. Comparisons first, the Wallace Edge tool. You'll notice here in the comparison section that I like the neutral gripped handles. Mm, neutral. You won't find any jimped grips or palm meat scale grooves. The Spear 2 XXL here has a nice finger groove and a slightly bulbous sculpted handle. Now Mike spends most of his days designing knives for cold steel, but he's obviously a skilled knife maker in his own right. Even if he isn't doing many customs these days, I think he's slowed down on that, so good luck getting him to make one for you. This big knife just feels right in my hand though, and it's a pure joy to chop things with. Now, one of the closest knives I've felt to it, and the, the way the steel rings when you pound some wood with it, there's like this certain, you know, you, you just, when you hear it, you know it. Well, it's closest to the Carothers chopper I reviewed a few years ago. That one was also about 500 bucks. I don't know if it's a 3V's heat treat, but uh, most of my carbon steel knives don't have that, you know, it's a song. It's like a song. Now the Hunglas. Now comparatively, the Junglas feels lighter in the hand, almost machete-like. It doesn't have that big choil up front like the Wallace Spear. Now, while I don't do any detail work, whatever the hell that means on a knife this big, you can conceivably get your fingers safely and closer to the blade on the Wallace Spear than the other knives seen here. Maybe you spend your warm afternoons doing feather sticks in your fedora, and your evenings ranting into the internet about the culture wars. And in that instance, the Wallace would work better for you than those other knives. Now the BK9, which uh, becomes a sure knife in the hand when you put the $40 Micarta scales on it. Plus there's a familiarity to the fabric band-aid aesthetic of the handles. Reminds me I need to buy some. The knife has some half-assed jimping up top. I like uh, the finer pitch jimping that, you know, you would actually consider jimping. Is this, you know, these are, these are like large thumb pokers. It's under 100 though, so there's that. Not with uh, the $40 scales though, that's a upgrade. Let's look at the Wild West buoy. You know, uh, this was a breeze to touch up on the Sharp Maker. The SE, not so much. The edge grind must match my 40 degree setting on the Sharp Maker pretty easily. This is an homage to the classic Western buoys, which you can't buy anymore and cost about $70, but the cross guard kind of rattles. I guess I could remove the scales and put some JB Weld on it there, fix it, you know, but I'm a lazy, lazy man. How about a Kukri? This one has the grip grooves, but I still like it. This one also has a special ring to it when you hit wood and chop. Maybe carbon, but it sings. The Spear 2 XXL isn't quite as heavy as a Kukri like this, but it's, you know, close. It has a sure heft that gives you that familiar Kukri feeling. You guys know what I'm talking about. We're going to wrap it up, guys. When you get into knives, I don't know how you just stick to the cheap, regular stuff. I get that some people are just getting a few good knives and being done. Sure. Okay. But if you're the sort of dude who uh, watches the videos, spends hours looking at new knives, posting using the NKD hashtag, says stuff like EDCing to blank stares from coworkers, at some point you're going to get custom curious, right? Of course, I also understand it's a lot of money for one thing, and not everyone can reasonably go down that road, which is fine. Luckily for me, this channel and the ad revenue it generates for watching those stupid ads allows me to go down some of those roads and still allows my kids to eat. It's a hobby that pays for itself. I keep this kind of separate, and I'm appreciative for my viewers for that. Anyway, so if you can reasonably afford a custom, uh, what do I look for? Well, single maker knives or very small productions. Do they, do they call those mid-techs anymore? Does that word mean anything? I think of buying a custom knife like this from a single maker as supporting a craftsman or an artist. 
black. Mike makes very interesting designs for cold steel, and I think his custom fixed blades are just great looking classic patterns. The Spear 2 XXL here is a bit larger than he normally makes, but it's well made and finely crafted, and it's in my collection permanently because how you've seen me treat it. From a functional perspective, it's an excellent user with awesome ergonomics and it's pretty indestructible. Sure, if you just want a chopper, the SE Hoonglass or the BK9 are excellent choices and under $200. Although when chopping something heavier like a Kukri or this, add more weight behind the chops. So more wood flies, at least that's my theory. My three Kalash Kukris and this are my absolute favorite big dumb knives. However, the spear is really so damn beautiful and sure in the hand, it's been my favorite for a while. It's easily my favorite handle of the big knives. If you like this sort of video, you really need to thank the patrons and the viewers. They make it possible to occasionally chase my dreams, which uh, apparently uh, just owning a few custom knives and standing naked and ashamed in front of a thousand people. Buy a t-shirt or sticker if you think I'm worthy. Like, subscribe, follow Mike on Instagram. You can follow me there too, but follow Mike instead. Can't wait to see some knives pop up on his feet again when he gets some time. I hope he makes some kick-ass knives for Cold Steel too, you know, now that they've been sold to GSM. Anyway, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.